hello everyone hello 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 let me know if you can hear and see me praise god praise god i cannot see you guys though let me know if you can hear and see me hello everyone i told you guys i was gonna get back up here it's i don't know why it's kind of i don't know i don't know what facebook doing i look all cloudy can y'all hear me though that's the main thing can y'all hear me Hi, you know what? How you doing, Patricia? God bless you. God bless you. Good evening. Can all of you hear me and see me? That's what I'm trying to get you to see. Oh, praise God. Can you hear me good? Because they got me looking like, I don't know, like I'm a cartoon. <laughs> Pray. All right. Praise God. Praise God. So if you do not see the scripture that I'm coming from, it says Luke 22, 31. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift all of you like wheat. That's from Luke twenty-two thirty-one. What am I saying? Yeah, I know it's cloudy. I mean, <laughs> they got me all cloudy looking. And I don't know what it is. Let me try to do. I have no idea, you guys. Um, it really does look cloudy, huh? Oh, well. And, and this is a brand new computer, so I'm just going to roll with it because I, I don't have time for Satan and his tricks and, and all that other stuff. I mean, it really looks cloudy, but I'm not going to. Mm -mm. Let me tell you what God was saying. We're in a time of testing. We're in a time of deep testing. I, I've been through it myself, going through it still. I'm talking about Satan. Feel, I feel like Satan is trying to hit me in my mind, my soul, my spirit. And, and But but he got to understand that this is going to be a war for real. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And so notice what the scripture says. Simon, Simon. Now, now, now Jesus is telling Simon this. But I'm telling you that's what Jesus is saying to us right now. He has asked. Satan has asked to sift us like we hold on all of you that means everybody i don't care who you are if you are a true woman or man of god you are going through it like never before come on somebody hallelujah only the ones that's tainted are not going through it because let me tell y'all something whether y'all believe it or not we have actually flipped back into biblical days now i know you don't believe it but you really should all you got to do is look around we're going back in biblical days. Don't let the technology fool you. Come on, somebody. Don't let social media fool you. Don't let the tricks of the world fool you. Don't let Hollywood fool you. We are back in biblical days. We're back in biblical days, I'm telling you right now. And Jesus is telling everybody, get ready, get ready, get ready. Get close to your God. Get in your Bible. Pray and fast like never before. Spend time with your family. Let me tell you something. You don't know when the the time, the hour, when you gonna pass. I'm just being real with y'all. This going this is very serious tonight. And I'm telling you what God has been telling me. God has been saying, Deanna, there, there's was what has happened. I'm gonna tell you what happened. Okay, I'm almost fifty. I don't mind saying my age because God has been good to me. Hallelujah. Especially all the stuff I didn't did. I ain't supposed to even look good as I do. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, I remember a time when I was young and I was, what, 12, 13. I remember the church had a certain anointing. Every church, it don't matter if it was small, big, so say mega. I don't even remember mega churches back then. It was just a big church or a little church or, or, or what they call it, them little country churches. You know what I'm saying? But I do remember walking in there each time, even Catholic churches and, and I'm just being honest with you. There was a presence there. There was a presence there. There was, the, and, and I truly believe now that there was the presence of God. Even if one served God, even if two served God, even if three served God, what am I saying? I want you to ask yourselves, and I'm not attacking churches. I, I want you to really, this is a serious live tonight. I want you to really hear me, hear the spirit of God speaking. When is the last time that you've actually walked into a church and felt the presence of God? Don't play with me. Don't don't because that's your friend or that's your past and you love the bishop or you love this one and that one because I'm gonna be honest with you. It's been a long time for me. It's been a long time for me. It's been a long time. Now hold on. I admit when the worship start, sometimes I feel the anointing and I say, okay, I could deal with this. But I'm talking about when was the last time that you walked in church and immediately when you got to the door, you felt the presence of God. You cannot lie to me because I know a lot of you don't feel it. Now, hold on. That's your first sign that we in trouble as a church, because that means the presence have left the building. And I'm just being real. That's why this new generation of preachers say, let's usher it in. From my understanding, and, and, and trust me, I could be a Bible, a Bible scholar if I really wanted to. That's why nobody don't really roll with me, because they know I know my stuff, even the ones that don't like me. How you like that? I'm telling you right now. 
God was always a dwelling God. He said, I dwell with you. Because hold on, if the Holy Spirit is in us, isn't that a dwelling, an uh, infilling of the Holy Spirit? So if it's an infilling, that means that guess what? The Holy Spirit is always present. The only time the Holy Spirit can leave you is when you leave the Spirit of God, when you start doing things. The Holy Spirit is not going to go with you and fornicate. I'm sorry. The Holy Spirit is not going to go with you and drink to a club. The Holy Spirit is not going to go commit adultery. I'm sorry. The Holy Spirit is not going to do that. So I'm going somewhere. Just, just, just walk with me. Walk with me. I, I know we, we live in a topsy turvy world where everything got to go fast, 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 but walk with me slow because that's the problem. The world has came into the church and got everything fast. If it, if it ain't no entertainment, y'all don't want to hear it. If it ain't the presence, and one thing about the presence of God, those that know the presence of God, he's not to be rushed. Yes, he. Did you know the Holy Spirit is a person? It's not just a it, it's a person. And guess what? Just like the Spirit of God, you can't rush the Holy Spirit. And right now, everything is... Come on, somebody, hallelujah. As a matter of fact, oh, I'm going to preach this thing like God told me tonight. You know what? I, 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 my heart is broken. And I know some of y'all are not going to understand me. These pastors, and yeah, I'm talking to some of y'all, and I hope you get the message because it's for you especially. Some of you have forgotten your God. You're so busy about the money. You didn't, you didn't up it up to two, three, four services, five services in one day. God didn't tell you to do that. I'm telling you what God said. Hallelujah. God didn't tell you to do that. You, you after that money, honey. Because the Holy Spirit don't have time. Because by the time you get out of one service, you got to get put there for the other service. So now let's say God wanted you to worship the whole service. I'm about to tell y'all something. My life has been so beautiful. I've had a lot of bad things happen. Don't get it twisted. But I remember some of the most intricate part of my life. Shreveport, Louisiana. I do not remember this church. But I remember the pastor and, and, and the congregation. So this is when, this is before 1996. This might have been in 1995 because I didn't start, I didn't get ordained to 1996, but 1995, I'll never forget. So I'm in Shreveport, Louisiana. And I had a girlfriend and we was working at the hospital together. And she took me to this church. You guys, to this day, I never saw a church like that. Till this day. And I was what, 26. I've never seen it. Let me tell you about this church. I will be walking at church. Everybody was blessed. No, 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 no. Y'all ain't ready for me. Everybody was blessed. It wasn't just the pastor. Everybody was blessed. Now, I, I got to learn this over a time. So you got to understand this wasn't just one day. This was over months as I watched everybody. And I'm going to tell you why. Because they something happened to me. Okay. One day I walked in. I was looking all set. And the preacher's son. I, I wish I remembered these people's name. Lord, Lord, Lord. But I don't. And I never forget. I, was, I had this perplexed look on my face. And he said, what's wrong, my sister? I said, oh, nothing. He said, no, no, no. Tell me. I said, I got a bill to pay, and I don't have the money to pay. I promise you, I'll never forget this as long as I shall live. Hallelujah to his name. That pastor's son, he said, hold on. He took out everything out of his pocket. And then, hold on, he, he called by five elders. He said, y'all come here. Give me everything you got, because you're going to get a bill paid today. Y'all ain't ready for me tonight, and I ain't talking about just money. I'm sitting up there, and I was perplexed. I'm looking, because I ain't never saw nothing like that. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. And i never forget. It will stick with me to the day I die. He said, now you got, you, got, you got enough to pay your bill plus put something in your pocket. And I remember the tears was falling down. I ain't never saw nothing like that. Tell me if you have. Come on, somebody. If you have, tell me. But I promise you, you probably didn't. Because that was the first time I ever saw something like that. And I, I was amazed. I say, and I, I, I went to, you know, sit down. And I was like, God, did they just really? And it was sincere. And they knew I wasn't running no game, by the way. Come on, somebody. Hold on. I ain't finished. So as I started going to this church, I noticed the pastor was, he was very unusual. He was very humble and very anointed. There was times I wanted to hear the word. He would say, mm -mm, not today. He said, if you came to hear some word, you might as well just go ahead and get back. He said, because my father in heaven says he wants us to worship them. I ain't gonna lie. The first time I was like, I'm looking at these people like they're crazy. I'm like, I'm trying to hear some word. I don't want to just worship because I wasn't used to that. And I'm telling you, these people was dancing until they were sweaty. So the first time, I ain't gonna lie, I was an observer. I just looked around. I said, I'm not getting my makeup all. You know, I'm doing all that. But honey, by two months in, I had caught on to it. And I never forget. I was with them two being sweaty, hair all. I'm talking about we didn't care about makeup, rain, everything. And everybody was so blessed. Hallelujah. I truly believe that that is when the gift of prophetic opened up in my spirit for real. Because I never forget I was sitting in that church. And I had my first truly, like, it was happening right there, a prophetic gift, whatever happened. 
I said, somebody is breaking in my house right now. I said, bring me to my house. You know, we caught the person. I am not kidding. We caught the person and the we called the cops. The person got arrested. So at the time that they was breaking in, my gift was so powerful that I tapped in and saw them breaking in my house at that time. Y'all ain't ready for me. Y'all ain't. I, I cannot remember that church to the day. I'm going to have to ask God and ask God because I would love to go visit. I would love to tell y'all if y'all in the Shreveport area to go because I would never forget this man, his son, and his family because they were blessed. When I say everybody was blessed, you have to hear what I'm saying. I didn't see one person that had a need because if they had a need do you know what that pastor would say he said um everybody everybody sometimes he would have a, have a collection he say this sister this elder and he and he really particularly loved the older people he said we need men to cut the her grass on sunday all the old people i had never seen no stuff like that till this day i have not heard of what i'm telling y'all i'm saying all this to say that was the way you do it mm, y'all ain't ready for me and this man, as a matter of fact, he didn't even have cameras in the church. He didn't want cameras. He, he said, there are some things that shouldn't be um, camera. Oh, I'm, I'm trying to walk with y'all. I'm trying to tell y'all what's going on in the church today. Can y'all really hear me? Y'all don't understand what's happening? Everybody got a phone now. Everybody got a phone. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. you. Everybody got a phone. This is Samsung. I don't do iPhones. Everybody got a phone. And guess what? Every time y'all see something, especially in church, y'all, can I tell you something? That's what that's, that's the first thing. Everything is not to be recorded. Some things are holy just into the Lord. And y'all sitting up there telling the enemy all our secrets. Y'all want to hear what I'm saying. And y'all wonder why they know what we know. And y'all wonder why it's such a spiritual battle. I'm just being honest with y'all. Because the enemy then came in. The world then came in and got the church so worldly into guess what? We operate like the world. Don't play with me because you know it's true. I'm talking about everything has to be televised. Everything has to be live. Come on, somebody. Let's be real. Let's be real. Everybody's doing everything just to get followers and this and that. Can I tell y'all something? If we don't come back to the true worship, the true worship of worshiping Jesus Christ, what am I saying? Ooh, y'all going to understand what I'm saying in a minute. When you're by yourself and you ain't on live and you ain't on the phone and you ain't putting on, but just loving them. Just telling them, I love you. Creating me a clean heart. Take out everything that's not right in me. We know what we're doing. Don't act like we don't know what we're doing. God, just, 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 just strip me of everything that's not of you. We're not doing that enough. Because guess what? And I'm just going to call it like it is. God says a people-pleasing spirit. I'm going to say it again. A people-pleasing spirit. That's why I took off the white robe, by the way. I noticed something. People have started following me mostly because I had on that white robe. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm telling you because they would inbox me and say, where's your white today? Where's this? I took it off on purpose because I'm the same woman of God without the robe. Don't get it twisted. And that's what some of y'all doing because people put on white or people put on a shawl, a prayer shawl, which to be honest with y'all, that ain't supposed to be out in public like that. Not a prayer shawl. That is your prayer shawl. That has the anointing on that. That ain't even supposed to be at the sight and in the sight of other people because you don't know what their spirit is and yet you're putting it on your head. Where does the anointing rest? The anointing rests on your head and it triples down. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Some of y'all doing a little too much and then you wonder why your anointing is not powerful. Y'all haven't seen me because guess what? I'm after something. And it ain't followers. It ain't numbers, because if that's the case, I know the tricks of the trade. I could have 200,000 followers if I wanted to. I know how they do when they do what they do. Trust me, because everybody do it. You want to know what they do? I told y'all what they do before. They sponsor, and they let's say I have this live, and I get off. I pay $10 to boost it. Go, go, go play with me. Come on, somebody. Hello. I know the game. 23 years in this. I know how to do it. That's not my forte. I want to do this for real. Because you need the anointing of God. You need the real, real spirit of God. Because people, they tired. People are looking around. The world needs a healing. The world needs deliverance. The world, is it, you know why the world is going down? Because the church is going down. But God say, not so. God say, for 7,000 that have not bowed to bail that means seven thousand they don't care about the fame they don't care about the name they just want i just want to please you god even if it means that i decrease because that's what's gonna need to happen we must decrease john said it john said it best come on somebody hallelujah i must decrease so he must increase y'all don't understand what's happening here so we're in a battle right now and and if you see my title 
God says, this is the year of the beast. That's why y'all see. That's why I'm on here right now tonight. Y'all, evil is railing up. I, I've always had manifestations since 1996. I've seen demons. They have jumped in my car. I've seen sexual demons. You know, you all know what that means. I mean, something was filling all over me, and I didn't see no man. So I think I'm playing. I, I, I was scared. I didn't know what was going on. I, I looked around. I said, now, Lord, what is this? Y'all don't hear me. When you anoint it, they're coming after you with every fiber of your being. That's why everybody can't roll with me. Because I will scare you. Because they don't like me. And I don't like them. And let it be written. Hallelujah to his name. I serve the Lord thy God, Jesus Christ. God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And no other shall I bow down to. Do what you gotta do. But I will not bow down to the ways of Baal. I will not bow down to the things of this world. I will not bow down, said the Lord. Hallelujah to his name. And only, only those that don't bow, God said he can trust. Because if you bow down to anything but God, then God cannot trust you. That's money, that's sex, that's anything. That's why I say most of the people are tainted. And that's not to act like I'm all holier than thou. No, 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 no. I got to get in that word. I got to fast. I got to pray. I got to call on God. Every time temptation rise, when lies rise, when I get tired, when I get weary, I call on the Lord thy God. God help me. God save thy anointing in the name of Jesus. And he's serious. Hallelujah to his name. My brothers, my sisters, this is testing time. He's after you. He's after you. He's after you. And I'm going to tell you, they got plants that are coming after you. What is plants? I've said that so many times, y'all should know. They'll send men that all of a sudden are interested in you. And you feel it in your spirit that it ain't real. But you'll sit up there and go with the facade, not knowing this time it might be for your life. They send in women, very gorgeous women. And y'all men just going for it. And it's a setup. It's a setup from the devil. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Just like in James, first chapter of James, God says that I won't tempt you because I can't be tempted. He said, but you're drawn away by your own lust. Your own desires. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. He says, but, 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 but those that wait on the Lord should be sustained. Those that wait on the Lord. That's another reason why some of y'all getting into this. Y'all don't want to wait. God taking too long. I'm going to have to handle this myself. I've heard that so many times from y'all, even in the spirit. And God taking too long. I got to do what I got to do. How many of y'all say that? Tell the truth. Be honest with yourself. How many of you say that? And then you wind up in some situations and you wind, and then, then the first person you get mad at is God. Because wait a minute, as if God told you to hurry up and go before him. God didn't tell you to do that. You did that because you did not want to wait on the Lord. And I can tell you, I can testify. I know sometimes it get hard. Wait. Oh my God, I know. But I, <laughs> I'm not going to be tricked by the devil though. Hallelujah to his name. So I pray you understand what I'm saying. This is real. This ain't no game. This ain't no Facebook. You know, people just get on and, and want to, facade know my brothers and sisters i pray that you are truly getting in your word i pray that you are crying out to god in these last days and this last hour like never before i pray that you are praying over your family because let me tell you something and i hope y'all really listen to this last part the spirit of Bilal is real. That's what that's the murdering spirit that's over the nations, not just in this continent. Bilal. Go ahead and look at a B-E-L-I-A-L. I'm gonna say that word again. Bilal. B-E-L-I-A-L. I learned about Bilal. Let me tell y'all a story. God always tell me to tell y'all stories. I, I guess because it's true, right? When Prophetess Juanita Bynum first um anointed me twice when I went to see her in 2013. Let me tell y'all what happened. So y'all could see how real it is. So I was living in California, right? So I flew, I was there for the whole weekend. I flew out, I think, Monday or Tuesday. I'm not really recollect of what day I flew out. And I never forget, I was in Arizona. Now, Arizona and Sacramento just an hour away. Do you know I was in that airport by myself that night and I could not leave and I was mad. They kept canceling my flight. I got mad up in there because I had to stay the night in an airport by myself. And of course, you know, they had um, some, some guy that worked behind the counter here, gave me a blanket. And, and I'm mad at God. I'm like, God, I'm tired. I don't want to go home. Why I can't get on that plane? God did not tell me to the next morning around four o'clock. I woke up. He said, now you can get on that plane. And, and y'all don't have to believe me. I really don't care. But for those that see in the spirit, understand what I'm saying. He said, Deanna, they had three warlocks that was on that plane. 
that plane, you'd have never made it home. Now, I don't know what would have happened. Don't ask me. I'm just telling you what God said. I had to spend a whole night by myself. Y'all don't hear me in Arizona airport because I couldn't get on the plane because they had three wallets. I wasn't where I'm at today. He said, you're not ready. You're not ready to face them. It was three warlocks. He said, you would never have made it home. Now, I don't know what they, he didn't tell me what they was going to do, what they wouldn't do. And I remember just sitting down crying. I said, God, I want to be powerful. I don't want to be to where you got to stop something because I can't face whoever or whatever. That's why I started getting strong in the Lord. I said, okay, I, I got to do, and, 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 and it's not easy. Fasting, praying, um, saying no to this, you can't go here. And, and hold on. It really is a life of loneliness. When you are truly anointed and pointed, please hear me. It's not saying that everybody else is bad and you don't want to spend time with people, but you're on a mission. You are anointed and appointed for such a time as this. You ain't got time because you don't know what they're doing. Not to say that you're not per you perfect, but I'm just saying you have to be ready to move when God say move and use your anointing when God say use your anointing and you have to move and panic because you don't know what kind of demonic is coming against you. Hallelujah. You know how much stuff I've stopped back from my family, and yet I ain't gonna go there. You know how much stuff I stopped back from people. <laughs> I ain't gonna go there. I saw it, and I prayed and labored all night. I'm gonna tell y'all something though, because y'all need to know y'all could even stop by stop death. Yes, you can. I I don't think I told this to anybody like on a live. Only a few people know this, but like I said, I think before I die, y'all gonna maybe get telling all everything. Y'all gonna know everything about me, right? Okay. It was um, 2006, Alfred Brandon Sr., my grandfather, that lived right here in Abbeville. They had called me and they said he was dying. Now, for those that don't know, that's who raised me. Um, my father wasn't in my life at that time. You know, something else was going on, whatever. And so I, God had woke me up. He said, my servant is getting tired. And I remember, I said, not, not now. I said, I can't take it now. I said, too much stuff going on. I said, please. Please not now. I remember I called in for work. That was six o'clock that morning. I laid on that flow. I didn't get up to six o'clock the next morning. Hallelujah to his name. I mean, I cried unto God. I say, no, God. Hallelujah. No, God. I can't take it. I say, this is your servant, Deanna, God. Hallelujah. I stand in the gap, God. I say, I stand, God. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you right now, at six o'clock the next morning, they called me and told me my grandfather was okay. He lived one more year. Now, this is what I didn't tell. So if the family see it, whether they believe it or not, it really don't matter. The month before he died, which is the next year, I heard God woke me up. He said, my servant tired. I'm finna take him. I said, Father God, I'm stronger now. I said, do, do what you're going to do. And Papa died. So don't tell me. Oh, I'm sorry, y'all. Don't tell me that the power of God is not real. That's why I don't care what nobody say. I don't care what nobody do. I don't care what they, hallelujah. I've experienced the power of God. Hallelujah to his name. And it's real. And it's, and I wouldn't trade it for nothing or nobody. I promise you, I, I just couldn't do it. Even when it looks good. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I'm preaching tonight. Even when temptation, even when I think I won't, even when I, 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 I remember how good he's been to me. Hallelujah. And all I'm saying to you, my brothers and sisters, this is the time. You better get close to your God because you're going to have to back up some stuff because it's coming. And I, and I hate the sound. And I know a lot of people say that goes the doom and gloom prophet. I'm sorry if I sound like Jeremiah. I'm sorry if I sound like Elijah. But I got to say what thus said the Lord because it's coming. But your portion is to get strong in the Lord. Your portion is to get close to God. Your portion is to be the iron pillar for your family. Your portion is to be anointed in this season. Your portion is to be appointed in this season. Your portion is to get up like a soldier and stand and gird, hallelujah, and do what you got to do. If God said pray all night, well, where are the watchmen? Where are the welling women? Oh, come on, somebody. I feel the power of the living God right now. Where are you? You're so busy doing everything else, but you're not on your job. You're not praying all night, Joseph. Oh, come on, somebody, David. You ain't worshiping all night, David. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Where are you? What are you doing? Are you on your post, said the Lord. We so busy doing this, 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 this. But are you doing your post? Are you on your post? And not just posting the Facebook. Hallelujah. Woo. I feel the power of God. I'm telling y'all. I wish. Somehow, sometimes I wish y'all could see what God showed me. And then y'all would see, y'all would understand. Other than that, I, under, I get it. I get it. Trust me, I get it.
But I promise you right now, we better get ready, get ready, get ready. Get close to your God, and I mean it. Spend time with your family while you can. Forgive those that have hurt you. Forgive family, forgive friends. No, you ain't got to be buddy-buddy with nobody, but get that stuff out of your heart so that you can get closer to God like never before, so that when you need God to move, he'll move. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. A lot of you are stopping your own anointing because that stuff. Every day I examine myself, and if I do something, y'all don't notice I'm humble. I don't mind. I don't mind apologizing to anybody. If I did, I'm sorry. If I made a mistake, I apologize. If I no, 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 you can't be. To, and that's what's wrong with most leaders. I'm telling you what God say. Very high-minded and arrogant and proud. I don't care how many degrees you got, honey. You still got a facial maker just like that one that ain't got but one degree, and you got five degrees. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. We all got to face our maker. So I pray in the name of Jesus. That you continue to be steadfast, unmovable in the things of God. And it's time for you to get close to God for real. No more show, bed, no more entertainment, no more, no, no. And no, it's not going to be easy. No, it's not going to be easy. Your flesh is a mess. Your flesh wants to do everything opposite to the spirit of God. And that's why you got to speak to yourself, David. You have to encourage yourself, David. And guess what? It's going to be some family members. It's going to be some friends. It's going to be some times that things that God going to allow that make you think that even God is not on your side. And yet you got to hold on and say, God, I trust in you. You got to do like Job said. Though they slay me, yet I will trust in him. Hallelujah. You got to understand that word is real. That's why you got to get that word inside of you. Y'all, most of you too busy for the word. You don't want to read the word. The only time you want to read it is, and that's another thing. I don't read my word on no phone. I have my Bible. I'm, and my Bible is always near me. I have my Bible. My Bible is tearing apart, but I, mean, I don't know if we get laminated or not, you know, but I'm telling you, the word, the word, I sleep with it by me, by the way. And so that way, when I wake up, it's the first thing I want to, I want to read that word. I want to be reminded, read your word, read your word. And there are sometimes, I ain't going to lie to you, I, I, I'll try to, you know how you get up and, and God will say, you haven't read your word yet. And I, I start laughing because God loves us. He, the Holy Spirit loves us. So he, he, he's just like a father for you, always trying to keep you in line. And I know sometimes it could be like, oh, don't, don't act like you ain't never said it. I felt that, like, okay, God, okay, God. And all he's trying to do is get you to save you, get you to save your family, get you closer to him. Because guess what? Without the spirit of God, without the anointing of God, without the fire of God, without the power of God, you would not be able to stand the walls of the devil. And that's what's really going on in this day and time. And I'm going to say it again, Luke 22 31, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift all of you like wheat. Let me tell y'all something. He's asked God to try you. Hello, pass the test. All right, I am. Even if you got to pass it with tears in your eyes, with fears, with doubts, don't you dare give up. As a matter of fact, look, never give up on you, even though they got me all blurry. Ain't nothing wrong with this computer. They be doing too much. <laughs> All right, you guys, Woo. God bless you. I pray that you, you really listen to, because I don't just get on here. I don't just get on here. I ain't got time to perform. I ain't got time to try to be somebody I'm not. I just want to do what God want me to do to the best of my ability, because what I really want to hear is well done, thy good and faithful servant. Hold on. Did you hear what he say? Thy good, not wretched, not thy work of iniquity, and faithful. That's another thing. Be consistent. Be consistent. A lot of you are not consistent. One day you love God. One day you really, oh, you gone ho. I'm going to serve God. Next day something happened. Oh, whoa. No, no. You got to be consistent. And, and like I told you, it's not going to be easy. But be consistent. Stay consistent. And quit gossiping. And quit putting your mouth on people. And quit being jealous of people. And quit being ugly. And quit being nasty. You know, when you're in that word, it'll calm your mouth down. When you're in that word, God will tell you. Don't say that. When you're in that word, God will say, don't do that. When you're in that word, it's called the spirit of conviction. But when you're in that word, you ain't got no conviction. You, you're you so quick to make your head spin. All right, y'all got me. Ooh, like I didn't preach. I ain't got all sweaty. Ooh, Jesus. All right, God bless you. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. And I'm so sorry they got me all cloudy on here. I, I wish that was the cloud of glory, huh? <laughs> all right. Roll out soldiers for that is who you are. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. <clears throat> Let's get it.